Hello and welcome to Thank You to Creations podcast. I'm your host, Elle, and this is our second episode for the year. By now, you have already heard or listened to our episode with the amazing Alicia from Soul, uh, Soul Riot, LLC. And I know it has been a while, guys. I have been everywhere but able to record an episode. So thank you for being patient. Thank you for still liking our post and listening to our previous videos. Colors and I are very grateful. And yes, Colors will be back for a few episodes this year. We are trying to just get our schedules in order since we both are usually quite busy with multiple other projects and of course our full-time jobs. So again, thank you for returning if you are a returning listener and thank you for joining if you are a new listener to our podcast. Now on today's episode, I will be talking about Nostradamus and some of the predictions that were closely aligned with facts, meaning that he predicted it was going to happen and something similar of an event occurred. So let's learn a little bit about who Nostradamus was. Known as a French astrologer, physician, and reputed seer who lived in the 16th century, often credited with making predictions about the future, some of which are believed to have come true. However, it's important to note that Nostradamus' writings, particularly his collection of prophecies titled Le Prophecies, it's French, so don't come for me, are highly symbolic and open to interpretation. Many of his quadrants are vague and have been applied to various events after they occurred, leading to a wide range of interpretations. So not everyone believes that he was actually predicting the future, but some of his writings are very close that others do believe he was some kind of, you know, prediction magician. (laughs) While some people claim that Nostradamus predicted specific events with accuracy, there's considerable considerable skepticism among historians and scholars regarding the validity of these claims. I'm telling you, these words that I looked up earlier, I said them perfectly before this recording, and every time I record, it happens. I have some kind of stutter or impediment to read my own notes. So sorry about that. So Nostradamus' writings are often seen as poetic and metaphorical, allowing for a multitude of possible interpretations. So let's see what the three top events are considered to align with his predictions. The first one is going to be the Great Fire of London in 1666. What an odd number. Nostradamus quadrant, and this is his writing technically. The blood of the just will be lacking in London, burned up in the fire of 66. The ancient lady will topple from her high place. Many of the same sect will be killed. So the interpretation was some believe that this quadrant refers to the Great Fire of London in 1666, suggesting that Nostradamus predicted the destruction of the city. However, the connection is speculative and the language is considered sufficient sufficiently vague to apply to various events. So I'm not really sure if the actual 66 was written in his writing. And if it was, then I would think that it's pretty close to what actually happened, um, the Great Fire of London. But, you know, some um, speculators uh, have other opinions. So the second event was the French Revolution that went on from 1789 to 1799, and his writings entailed from the enslaved populace, songs, chants, and demands, while princes and lords are held captive in prisons, these will be in the future by headless idiots be received as divine prayers. And the interpretation was this quadrant as a prediction of the French Revolution, particularly the overthrow of the, uh, oh my gosh, aristocracy? Yeah, (laughs) and the rise of a revolutionary sentiment. However, the connection again, open to interpretation. And finally, the third A prediction I have here is for World War II and Hitler's rise. So his writings, and I quote, were, Beast, ferocious with hunger, will cross the rivers. The greater part of the battlefield will be against Hister. Into a cage of iron will the great one be drawn when the child of Germany observes 
absorbs nothing, observes nothing. And the interpretation suggests that Hister in his quadrant refers to Adolf Hitler and the mention of beasts crossing rivers may symbolize the German military during World War II. However, once again, this is open for interpretation and there's no clear evidence of his prediction. And it's just crucial to approach Nostradamus' prophecies with a critical mindset, understanding that the language he used was often symbolic and open to multitude interpretations. Many of the claimed connections between his quadrants and historical events are uh, retrospective and are subject to uh, confirmation bias. As such, Notre Dame's predictions remain a topic of debate and skepticism in the field of history and literature. So I imagine that when he was writing these texts out, right, his predictions, he was probably seen as some kind of crazy man. But if we think about it, are any of our own, let's say, um, uh, people who have prophecies, can't think of the name for them right now and i'm referring to like tarot card readers or those astrological mindset individuals who tell us what the future may hold or even our horoscope readers how where they get this information would he be any different from them although his predictions are much more historical sense and these are much more astrological and am i going to find the love of my life (laughs) very different is it any different do we perceive them any different Honestly, again, open for interpretation and you can have your own opinion. I have many, I know many individuals who will make it a common thing to look up their horoscopes every month, every week, every day. Uh, Others are into a much more deeper uh, thoughts such as, um, or ideas such as uh, birth charts and how they should live their life. I've even seen the uh, possibility of being happier depending on your location. So I don't know if you all have heard that, but you are able to go onto a website and I can't think of it right now. And if I remember, I will drop it in the uh, description to this video. You can look at the coordinates of where you are living um, and then where you were born, what hour, what date, and you enter that information and it will actually tell you where in the world you should be living to be happy. I believe I did it once and it was somewhat close to the state of California, which to me was amazing because I've always wanted to go. And um, and for those who don't know, I was actually born in Los Angeles, California. Um, we'll just say in the 90s. <laughs> But uh, my parents went to South West uh, Midwest, and I lived most of my life in Illinois, which is why you will probably never really hear me say I'm from California or from LA because I did actually grow up in Chicago, Illinois, uh, the greater portion of my teenage years and some of my early uh, early adulthood. And then of course, everybody kind of knows now that I have lived the last almost ten years with the exception of the last, I don't know, few months earlier this year in Virginia. But for the most part, I lived about 10 years in Texas. So yeah, so my happiness is actually nowhere where I am. (laughs) So that kind of sucked. But I do hope one day to go out to the sunny state of California and explore pretty much everything. I mean, there's just so many cities, so many places. So with that happy thought, I would like to go ahead and once more, thank you all for listening. Thank you all for subscribing. Make sure to follow us on YouTube, CastBox, uh, Amazon. We are technically everywhere now, Spotify and also I believe Apple Podcast. Um, Well, we are not also, but we are uh, basically on every platform. And the reason why is because we want to make sure that we are available to anyone who would like to listen to us. And again, as a reminder for the new year, make sure to drop some comments, send some private messages for ideas for our new episodes coming every two weeks now. There's a bit of a change this new year. So we're trying to aim for a new episode every two weeks, whether it's myself, myself and a guest, myself and colors, or myself, colors and a guest. (laughs) So definitely make sure to check us out every two weeks. We'll be dropping new content. Follow us on TikTok. We do drop a lot of bonus episodes there, as well as our Instagram account, which is Thank You to Creations Podcast. And TikTok, you can find us the same way. Again, thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.